Good day, ladies and gentlemen. So we're doing a house map for the last portion of the election prediction. As you may know, I'm not available next week to do these videos, so I'm recording them in advance. Um, at the moment, we have 203 to 188 as a baseline. That's basically what the guarantee is going to be, and um, we'll keep focusing on that. So uh, how about we move from finishing the south, and then move northeast, midwest, and then do the west, okay? It's pretty good. So, Texas, let's start there. Uh, Gonzalez, he's going to win. Pretty handily, I think about 8 to 9 points. I would recommend any Republican in that particular district vote against Gonzalez. So that next election around, you're going to have a decent Republican representing him. Representing this district. You fuckers, you shouldn't have been lazy. You should have just voted for Brandon Herrera. Because then you would have at least a competent and decent Republican in that seat. Now he just got Democrat light. So, shame on you, Fox. Um, De La Cruz, she's going to win by about 8, 9, maybe above 10. We'll just have to see. Cuellar, at the moment, I think is going to get away with the corruption activities. So, likely Democrat. Gonzalez, I'm going to keep it at 4, 5 points for him. So, that is definitely a seat that needs to be investigated a little bit more later down the line. Uh, Louisiana, the map stays. As with Alabama... So this is pretty much a safe guarantee. The only thing we need to worry about is Virginia and North Carolina. So let's do North Carolina really quick. Uh, Don Davis against Laurie Buckhout. So Buckhout is basically one of those Washington insiders. Um, terrible candidate. But the Rhinos are going to do everything to try and get her elected. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem for Don Davis. As you can see, this part here, this bulge in the south, that is historically a Republican suburb. That is rhino Republican suburb. So I think Buckout is going to pull it off, albeit with a margin of about two, maybe three points. So I'm just going to put it at tilt at the moment. A little closer than you expect it to be. So next up. Jen Kiggins, don't even bother, she's going to win quite handily. Uh, last up, this one is really a frustrating district for my personal opinion, or in my personal opinion. So we have, um, I don't know who the Republicans put up, but the Republicans having some fundraising issues. And then you have um, one of those two Ukrainian military officers running for the Democrat seat in this particular regard. It's just an all-around shit show. Um, they're both having funding issues. I hope Glenn Young can, can do some magic here, but at the moment I think I have the military of officer winning, so that's uh, Vintman, I think. So, that's that. Um, let's do the Northeast. So, we have Pennsylvania. There's no magic here in Pittsburgh. That's going to be a Democrat district. Uh, Wild and Cartwright. And Tom Keen. So Tom Keen, he's not going to lose. Neither is Molinaro. Neither is Lawler. And neither is Riley. Anything else can happen with these four seats. They can go either way. But at the moment, I'm going to say this. Um, in New York, I think one of the two districts is going to go for the Democrats. The other is going to go for the Republican. And the same thing with Pennsylvania. So at the moment, I think... Wild is going to hang on, and I think the Democrats managed to flip Williams' seat, which means Cartwright is going down, and Despacito gets to stay. Main second. This is a problem with terms of prediction, because you have ranked choice voting, and yes, there's also an independent on the ballot. What does this mean for us? Well, simply put, Trump is going to win the district by about 10 points, and it's just a matter of, are the down ballot... Consequence is going to be too much for Jared Golden to hang on. I think that's going to be a yes, albeit very narrowly. So that's the north. Uh, that's the northeast. Let's go with the, the Midwest. Um, few things I can say: John James, he's not losing. Neither is Derek Van Orden, and neither is Agnan. 
Likewise, Mervyn's not losing, Landsman's not losing, and Sykes is not losing. As a bit of an equal trade-off. So, are there going to be flips here in this particular section of the country? Because that is a question you're going to ask yourself right now. Uh, yes. For these two districts, Dan Kildee, his district is moving to the right. And with him retiring, I'm just going to say that is a narrow flip. As a counterpart, Slotkin's district is going to stay the same. I think that Cap Tour is going to slightly hang on, albeit kind of depending on how the district goes to vote in the presidential election. This is technically speaking a Trump plus four district. So if Trump manages to win in that district again, in such a wide margin, which is what uh, JD Vance is for, I suppose. If this district goes to Trump by about 67 points, yeah, you can definitely see Capture losing that election. Uh, likewise, I think Don Bagan is going to lose. There we go. Now we go to the West. Um, simply put, Oregon's, I want to say fourth. Let's just check it out real quick. Sixth district, that's, this is the fourth. Oregon 6, that's not going to flip. Uh, neither is any of the Nevada seeds. Nor is it the Denver suburbs. They are not going to flip either. The north of New Mexico is not going to flip. Neither is Levin's district. And that's it for the unflippable seats for the Democrats. For the Republican Party, Garcia, Calvert, um... I always forget, I think this one is Michelle Steele. And Valadeo. They're not losing. And as a result, Republicans have 219 members in the House already. Um, next things that need to be discussed. Let's go north to south, I suppose. Joe Kent against Marie Perez. So, with this being a presidential election, turnout is going to be about double of what you expect it to be. And there's going to be a hell of a lot more Republican votes in this particular district. So it's an R plus 4 district. Joe Kent is going to win. The inverse can be said for the 5th. That one's going to flip as well. And then we go Colorado. Well, um, hate to say it for Adam Fresh, but um, you're not winning. You can have all the money you want, you're still not winning that election. And there are suddenly 6 seats left. And I believe that... At least four of them will go Republican. So let's go Arizona. Because that's the bulk of it. Uh, Siskamani. He's going to hang on. Albeit narrowly. Same goes for Schweikert. They're both going to win by about three. Maybe slightly less than that. So about that particular range. Here's the thing though. Come midterms. Both of these seats are going to flip. So 2026. Schweikert is gone. Siskamani is gone. And maybe there's even going to be a lawsuit trying to force redistricting in, in the state. I mean, if the Democrats were, if the Republicans were really competent in trying to redistrict, they would just pick Tucson and just block it out. That's one district. West Phoenix is another one. East Phoenix is another one. And then you have six Republican districts and three Democrat ones. Just like that. And it's not gerrymandering because you're literally give the city their own congressional district. Um, let's do California. So, we have two districts, which are going to be really tight. We have uh, the 13th, which will be John Duarte against Adam Gray. So, it's a rematch from 2022. Funny thing about it is, um, Duarte is having problems keeping his staff on board. Kind of, Kind of the same thing as Harris has a problem with. Um, he went against all of his campaign promises. He started out as a border hawk, and now he's a pro-amnesty Republican. So, basically, it doesn't matter who's winning, because you got yourself a Democrat right here. Um, I think there are a lot of people that are going to be pissed off at him. And as a result, I'm going to hand it over to Adam Gray for that reason. I can say the exact inverse <laughs> for the Orange County seat. Porter is gone. Scott Bow is in 
and he's running against Dave Min, and Dave Min has got a DUI, which is something that is really killer in Orris County, especially in the suburbs of this particular region. As a result, Scott Bow he's going to narrowly win, and 2026, he's going to have a little bit of a problem trying to stay aboard. So maybe he can ask some help from Mike Garcia in order to uh, stay in. Let's do New Mexico. Last time around, it went to Gabe Vasquez by about 150 votes. In a midterm election, so that's a little bit of a um, lower turnout environment. Mm, less Republicans showing up. I think Harrell is the favorite. So I'm going to give that one to Harrell. Albeit, narrow margin. And the last one, Alaska. So here's the funny thing. Ranked choice voting, this time around, has two Democrats, one Independent, and a Republican. Last time around, we had one Democrat, three Republicans. So what are they going to, uh, the Republican voters going to do in the state? Well, they're going to cast a vote for a Republican. They don't have to deal with that confusing ranked choice voting anymore, because there's only one candidate on the ballot. And the neat part about this as well is there is a referendum on the Alaska ballot for November to repeal ranked choice voting. What does this mean? Peltola, if she wants to have her congressional pension, now's the time. Because then technically she would be on her second term. Hang on, I'm going to have to count this one. 2022, 2024. Did she win 2020? No, that was Don Young still. He died after the election. Um, no. She has to win 2026 to get her pension. So, uh, too bad for you. I'm going to give this one to the Republicans. Albeit, lean margin. So, what does this mean? Um, for the Republican Party, minimums... 203 for the democrats the minimum is 188 anything that is lean to tilt has a chance of flipping so yes at this point i think the republicans 226 subtract nine that would be uh 217 so i think the bare minimum for the republican party should be about 210 215 electoral seats for a Democrat, the bare minimum should be about the same. It's really just a coin flip who gets the House of Representatives this time around. But know it, it is going to flip after the uh, midterm. So whoever wins the presidency, they're going to hold the House for the first half of the term. And then it's going to flip in the midterms. With the Senate, that's going to be a little more of an iffy environment because the Republicans are now in a more def or now in an offensive territory next midterm it's going to be a little more defensive next term 2026 you have mitch mcconnell who's going to be replaced you have um dan sullivan who's running for re-election you have susan collins running for re-election you have uh lindsey graham I think uh, Cornyn is up for re-election. So basically all the bad Republicans are now up for re-election in the next midterm. So that's going to be a fun thing to watch. Um, and for those who skipped to the end of the video, I'm going to have a special map just for you. I'm just going just gonna to make everything safe. That one, that one, I'm going to put Nebraska in there. To an Oregon, the entirety of Nevada. That one in there. Let's do that one. So basically anything that is uh, not safe Democrat. Or likely. Still missing one, I believe. Shouldn't be, but whatever. Yep, that's it. 
So, for those who skipped to the end of the video, 247 for the Republicans, huh? It's about the same as Obama midterm levels. So, thank you kindly for watching. See you next time, and uh, hopefully a little bit better circumstances. So, uh, have a good week. See ya.